let's discuss about android architecture the android system architecture is divided into five layers as you can see in this diagram from top to bottom first comes the application layer which con contains the system apps and the normal application and then comes the application framework layer or the java api framework layer which contains all these managers activity managers location manager package managers etc and then comes the system runtime layer which contains the native c c++ libraries and the android runtime and after that the hardware abstraction layer or the hal which contains the necessary logics for audio, Bluetooth, camera, sensor, etc. And at the bottom most we have the Linux kernel layer where we have the drivers for audio, binder, display, keypad, Bluetooth, etc. And at the bottom we have the power management. So these are the five layers of Android architecture. So let's dig deeper into each of these components. In the application layer, both built-in applications and non-system level applications exist. So they are basically responsible for direct interaction with users. And they are usually developed in Java or Kotlin. And these apps are mostly developed by the application developers. And also there are the built-in stock apps which comes as part of AOSP. So we'll look at these system apps or the stock apps in a later session. The application framework layer provides developers with the APIs needed to develop applications. This layer is written in Java and it can be also called Java framework. But nowadays there are some framework codes written in Kotlin as well. We usually develop the applications, I mean the Android applications that can call the APIs provided by this particular layer. Let's look at the main components provided by the application layer. So first we have the activity manager. So activity manager is mainly responsible for managing the life cycle of each application. So each application is built with different activities or fragments. So it is the responsibility of the activity manager to manage the life cycle of each application or each activity within the application. Next is the location manager. The location manager provides the geographic location and positioning function services. For example, the maps will be using the location manager to get the current location of the device. Package manager. Package manager manages all applications installed in the Android system. It's basically responsible for installing, uninstalling and giving permissions to the applications installed in the Android system. Notification Manager Notification Manager allows the application to display custom prompt information in the status bar. So for example, when you get an email, uh, for example in the Gmail app, you get a message uh, at, the, at the notification that you have an e email. That is done through the Notification Manager. And then comes the Resource Manager. It provides various non-code resources the application uses such as the localized strings, pictures, layout files, color files, etc so if you are from an android application development background you definitely know localized strings pictures layout files color files etc which you use while developing the android application so it is the responsibility of the resource manager to maintain it then comes the telephony manager it manages all mobile device functions like the sim management and the network management etc then comes the window manager Window Manager manages all the open windows. So each activity is basically built with a window. So we will learn more in more detail about windows in a later session where we discuss about the windows management system. Content Providers Content providers allow data to be shared between different applications within the system. View System View system is responsible for building the essential view components of an application. So it's basically responsible for inflating your layouts. 
and these layouts has multiple types of views so the view system is basically responsible for rendering these different views onto the screen the system runtime library layer is divided into two parts the c c++ library and the android runtime library let's discuss about them separately so let's first look at the c c++ library the c c++ library can be used by different android system components and provide developers service through the application framework so all the services which we use through the application are dependent on the c c++ library below are some examples of c c++ libraries so the first one is opengl es opengl for embedded systems so this is basically a 3d drawing function library specifically designed for embedded devices then we have the libc so libc is basically the standard c system function library inherited from bsd bsd stands for berkeley software distribution and this is specially customized for embedded linux based devices and then we have the media framework so this contains the library which supports recording and playback of various commonly used audio and video formats like mp3 mp4 etc and then we have the sql lite this is a lightweight relational database engine so this is again a lightweight solution created for mobile devices and then we have sgl sgl stands for simple graphics library so this is the underlying 2d graphics rendering engine for android and then we have ssl so this is very common security protocol so the secure socket layer is a security protocol that provides security and data integrity for network communication and then finally we have the free type so this is basically to manage the different varieties of fonts so this is basically a portable font engine it provides a unified interface to access a variety of font file formats so these are some of the major c c++ libraries found in android system runtime layer the runtime library is divided into core library and art art stands for android runtime the core library provides most of the java language core library functions so that developers can use the java language to write android application so the purpose of core library is to simply provide java language core library functions okay now regarding the dalvik virtual machine or art dalvik virtual machine can be compared with java virtual machine but the dalvik virtual machine is specifically customized for mobile devices it allows multiple instances of virtual machine to run in the limited memory simultaneously and each dalvik application is executed as an independent linux process so since we have separate process it prevents all programs from closing when the virtual machine crashes so that is the main advantage since we have different process even if the virtual machine is virtual machine crashes then it will prevent from all the apps or or the programs from being closed so the reason why dalvik virtual machine was migrated to art is that art provides some advantages compared to dalvik virtual machine so under dalvik the bytecode needs to be converted into machine code by a just in time compiler every time the application is run so uh, dalvik basically used a just in time compiler so whenever the application runs it has to convert the code into machine code this will slow down the running efficiency of the application because whenever the application starts up it has to be first converted into machine code and then run the app so this will actually slow down the execution speed of the app with the introduction of art after android 5 the code of all the application will be pre compiled into machine code when it is first installed in the device so this makes the application a true local application okay, in this way art makes the app execute faster compared to dalvik now let's look at the hardware abstraction layer the hardware abstraction layer is the interface between the operating system kernel and the hardware its purpose is to abstract the hardware to protect the intellectual property rights of the hardware manufacturers it hides the hardware interface details of a specific platform and provides a virtual hardware platform for the operating system 
so that it has hardware independence it can be transplanted on various platforms from the perspective of software and hardware testing both software and hardware testing can be completed based on the hardware abstraction layer making it possible to perform software and hardware testing in parallel so in layman's term the purpose of hardware abstraction layer is to control the hardware so let's look at the linux kernel layer which is the bottom most layer in android android's core system services are dependent on the linux kernel and some android specific drivers for example audio display keypad bluetooth usb etc have been added on this basis the android's system security memory management process management network protocol stack and driver model depends on this linux kernel which makes android in a way more secured and stable so that's about the android architecture so understanding this five layer android architecture will help you when we analyze the system source code in the later tutorials